had evolved. Able to travel huge distances on relatively little fuel, scientists named it the Blue Motion Elephant. It had come to this. Two men called Nigel on a driveway in Essex. Both transfixed by their name on a car. I set out to make a light-hearted film about personalised number plates. I've got two reversing lights, you've only got one. Yeah. <laughs> and instead, I'd arrived in a particularly English world of repressed rivalry, polite one-upmanship, and the quest for the ultimate male status symbol. I once had a spit Spitfire, you know. Did you? <laughs> Last year, we spent over £84 million on personalised number plates. If people have got the money, they won't hesitate to spend big, big, big money on a plate. Sold, sir, at 100 and... I decided to find out who is buying them and why. This is my personalised registration, which reads Nemesis. I'm up on Akram, and that's my plate, Akram. Hi, I'm Diamonda, and this is my number plate, awesome. Flash plates don't get you from A to B any faster. You basically spent a fortune on something that's not going to benefit you at all. But the right combination of numbers and letters can cost more than a house. Well, if you're after your own name on a number plate, there's only going to be a very limited number of ways to achieve that, and people are willing to pay for the exclusivity. I was meeting mainly men. I don't like to be hidden amongst everyone else. I like to really stick out. Um, having a private plate, it allows you to do that. At first, the reasons for owning a plate seemed clear-cut. For many, it was just another flash accessory. Then I met Nigel. Hi there. <laughs> My name's Nigel, <laughs> commonly known as N1 Gel. Please meet N2 Gel. Oh, I don't want to look stupid on camera. <laughs> Nigel was an accountant from Nottingham. Like everyone I'd met, he was preoccupied with appearances. But I sensed there was much more going on for him. Oh, welcome to board number 46. Um, my humble abode. I won't go on about my paintings first thing because that's too egotistical. When we moved here, it was all height of expense, but I also height of bad taste. <laughs> And I'll take it up to the office, shall I? Okay. He's my husband and I love him to death. He's also, I think, very insecure. Um, and so sometimes I worry for him because he's killing himself to prove things to the world that he doesn't have to prove as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, if I could afford N1GL, I would prefer to have N1GL to have a joke and 2GL, and um, it would be nice to be the only Nigel on, on the roads. Nigel made me realise that the world of number plates could be a fiercely competitive place. That Nigels across Britain are competing for an ultimate number plate, to be the top Nigel. If your name is Nigel, your perfect number plate would be N1GEL. N1GEL. N1GEL, that would be the perfect Nigel's plate. I wanted to find the owner of that perfect plate, and now I was only interested in meeting men called Nigel. The next one I met looked ordinary enough. He was an IT man from Tewkesbury. But this Nigel had made a name for himself because according to the DVLA, his plate was too rude for the roads. So rude, he refused to even tell me what it was. His mate Ian showed me his plate instead. People call it three go, which is a shame because that is the number plate, but I look at it as ego. I just thought it was funny because I thought in a car with this attitude, the wing and all the... It looks like it's been to Halfords and robbed them blind. And the big tyres as well. The plate looks really good on the back and, and people point to the number plate. So, uh, yeah, I'd get a buzz out of that. I'd be lying if I, if I said I didn't. I mean, I don't know how you managed to actually get it so that you've got a barbecue that's the same colour as the car. Yeah, it's slightly off, but I might get the car repaint it again, get some more wood on it, I think. I could tell you I've seen uh, one go is up for sale with a registration uh, company at the moment for in excess of £120,000. Uh, I'd love to think mine was worth remotely anything like that. Plates can be worth a mint, but I already knew there was more to it than a fast buck. The next Nigel I found was the ultimate money man, a gold bullion dealer from Birmingham. 50 kilo, 9 carat. 
Okay. I'll get that booked on the morning's fix for you. Okay, cheers, bye. That's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot. 50 kilo. That's what's eight, that? Eight what's hundred, that for it? 800,000 pounds. 800,000 pounds. <sighs> million, million pounds. At first, it looked like Nigel had the ultimate plate for a man trading in gold. My nickname is Goldfinger uh, for simple reasons. I buy a lot of gold and I've got Goldfinger's number plate on the car. AU1 for any bullion dealer, they would love it. The AU is the chemical symbol for gold. It means a lot to me because it was something that I've always set my heart on, um, as it was uh, obviously in the James Bond movie, Goldfinger. I would definitely not sell that number now under £100,000. He's the gold man, definitely, yeah. yeah, definitely. We should take him away, melt him down, and see what we get out, yeah? Have you got a number plate? I haven't, unfortunately. Yeah. Would I'm you like one? I, I'd like one. Um, how about that other one out there? You go too far. Whose yeah. is that one? It's stupid. Everybody loves that. and we it's, bought it's that. It's a strange plate, though, isn't it? We bought it for £1,000. Really? Yeah. Number plates are more of a status symbol. They do look very, very good on the car. I come to work from um, Derby in the morning, and one of my other cars often passes me, or we pass that, and that's got a personalised number plate on, and I still look at it, and it still makes me smile, and I actually own it. So it's, um, if I'm thinking that, how many other people think that? But I had my suspicions that being Goldfinger wasn't enough for Nigel, and he'd set his heart on another plate. My most extravagant bid at, for a number was N1GEL, and I think it was something like £80,000. I set myself a limit before the auction. I went over the limit, which I don't normally do, and um, basically I was underbidder. But I would like to have N1GEL. It would look very nice. It would look great. He wasn't the only one who thought the ultimate Nigel plate would look great. And he wasn't the only one to miss out on N1GEL at the auction. Oh, it's lovely now. The sun's come out. Yeah. Although I attended the auction, um, when N1GEL was issued, it, was, it went for a ridiculous price, which was out of my league. And uh, so, fortunately, I got N2GEL when it was uh, first issued by the DVLA, which was uh, in March 95, which is quite a while ago. How much did you pay? I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, this is where the truth comes yes. out, because he's never admitted this. I have. <laughs> it was up to you. You think yeah. it, it, was, it, was, it was as cheap as I've told her, but she doesn't believe it. It was only <laughs> 600 and odd pounds, whatever the, the standard price is. I felt a bit mean, actually, when I was so cross when he bought it, because I know how much it means to him. But part of my anger was the fact that he needed it. It's good for my clients to see, because uh, I've not made a name for myself any other way. I wanted to make myself a name this way. <laughs> I know, I'm sad. But uh, if I tried to deny that I was um, sort of just wanting it for the attention, then, um, then people would be able to see through it or they'd think I was being stupid anyway. But if I admit that I'm being stupid, then it shows that I've got a sense of humour <laughs> and, uh, and I can laugh at myself. I think you would have, as you say, you would have loved N1 gel yeah. and then that would have been perfect. At first, my IT man seemed to be the only Nigel who wasn't interested in the ultimate Nigel plate. Instead, he'd plumped for one the DVLA had tried to ban, and he knew a lot about rude combinations. <laughs> and that, that one... <laughs> yes, I can see where you can't have that one, and you can't have that one. Like you were saying with B008. What, and UCK? Ah, uh, UCK is because of what you could put in front of it. And you, you don't like chicken cock. Yes, and sex. You can't, can have, you can't have sex on your car. The talk had turned mucky, but Nigel still wouldn't spell out the contents of his own plate. He did come clean about something. He, too, longed for N1GEL. Nigel's on a Lambo. It is, isn't it? It's a yellow yeah. Lambo. Yeah. And it's my ultimate plate, and it's on a yellow Diablo, Lambo, yeah. which would be, like, my ultimate car. So all my Nigels were after one thing. One man had come close, but his plate was far from perfect. A lot of people will have a perfect plate in mind and they'll just have to settle for something just below that. If you had N2GEL, you'd never be happy. You definitely would want N1GEL. But the ultimate plate, at the top of the pecking order, belonged to another Nigel, 
and it was time to go and find him. out to make a film about personalised number plates. I had come across a lot of men who loved the attention they brought. Everywhere I drive in the car, um, just doing mundane things like driving to work, doing shopping, people do stop and stare at the car. You're at traffic lights, people shout at you, open their windows, love your plate, I love your car. It's really good, it's good buzz. But for some, attention from just any plate wasn't enough. Only one would do. The yellow Lamborghini with Nigel on it. M1 GEL would have to be the ultimate as far as my name is concerned. I had to find out why this one plate was so important. And I had to meet the owner of N1 GEL. It was four weeks since I'd met Nigel, the IT man. So far, he'd refused to tell me the contents of his plate. I did know the DVLA had tried to ban it. As far as I'm aware, nobody's ever taken any offence in the number plate. I promised I wouldn't be the first. After all the build-up, I was more worried it might be an anticlimax. But finally, the moment had arrived. The earth hadn't moved for me, but I couldn't blame Nigel. My mind was on another plate. It was Nigel one I was after, and it was soon clear I wasn't the only one. Nigel two had been writing to him. Hi, Nigel. Just thinking about you again. Nothing new there. Nigel found my number plates mentioned on the internet uh, in a search engine, and so he contacted me, not knowing what sort of person I was. But he had uh, a, a sort of a more humble upbringing, but has made a real success of his life. Whereas I had virtually everything uh, in a way when I was a child, but now I've got a humble life. <laughs> Nigel, too, had made contact with the number one Nigel. Now it was my turn to try. But would he agree to meet? It was a tense wait, but finally I got the call I'd longed for. Nigel One was a retired satellite communications engineer from Essex. Meeting me in the street, not much about me would tell you I was successful. Um, but if you see me driving the car, I guess people know I'm successful. He'd made his fortune after selling his business, and he wanted his success to be noticed. He'd paid almost £80,000 for the privilege of owning the perfect plate. If I was driving N2GL, people might look at me and think he's the guy that can't afford N1GL. Dear Nigel, I see from your website that you own the plate N2GL. Sadly, I think I prefer mine. Do you think Nigel would be happier in some way if he had the plate that he wanted N1GEL? Um, he could just be himself. Um, but for him, there is that problem there. But he does recognise it. And he's quite honest about it now and says, you know, I'm a poser. I'm sort of posing as uh, something better than I am because I've got such a cheap number plate, whereas he's got such an expensive one. I wanted to know more about this Nigel's background to find out why appearing successful had become so significant. This is uh, my parents' home property, as, as when I grew up as a child. I don't have very many memories because I uh, sadly blocked, blocked out a lot of my memories from childhood and I've not been able to retrieve them, which uh, <laughs> says, says a lot for it. Sadly, my mum died uh, um, when, when she was very young and my father remarried and uh, I didn't see him again for 20 years until he was in a home with, with Alzheimer's. And uh, I wasn't upset that um, I didn't see any of the family wealth, but some of the, some of the possessions would have been nice because... Uh, because of the memories that went with them, my childhood and uh, memories of uh, my grandparents. But 
it, it, that's life. You, can, you can't change it. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're that age uh, when things happen, then there's nothing you can do about it, and you have to get on. There's no point in having resentment because uh, it only damages yourself. Perhaps for Nigel too, having his name on a plate really had helped him deal with disappointments from the past. But for other Nigels, it was harder to find out what was driving that need. So how many number plates do you own? Uh, I've got um, one, two, three... I think I've got six. And why do you want six number plates? Uh, well, um, they've, they've come along in separate deals and um, come up for sale at the right price over the years. And uh, because um, uh, it was... Uh, Always, why the bloody have I got, I don't know why I've got six number plates. Um, yeah, that's a that question. Why have I got six bloody number plates? I only do what I do for the people to see, I suppose, which uh, is, is, is very superficial. But um, I, because of the insecurity, uh, in, inferiority complex I sort of built when I was a child with being shipped off to boarding school, I um, am always sort of seeking approval, and uh, so other people's opinion of me is more important than my opinion of me, because I, I, I know I'm nice. <laughs> this is where I have um, so much empathy for Nigel, because he is aware of the problem that he struggles with. I think he was... Many children go to boarding school and love it, but I think Nigel was totally the wrong sort of child to be sent to boarding school also, his message from his father was, you know, status, 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 win, 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 don't ever lose, you know, son of mine, if you're a loser. So you get a skewed concept of what you've got to achieve in life. Um, and that's why I say sometimes, you know, I feel sad when he wants these things because I know where it's coming from and it's sad that he still feels like that. But I sense something was changing for Nigel too that he was beginning to question his part in the number plate game and that meeting Nigel One might help him. Today I'm going to see uh, the other Nigel <laughs> in one gel. Proper one. When he first contacted me, he uh, told me that uh, with his number plate being a far better or far more exclusive number than mine, but being number one rather than number two. Uh, he was sort of, I suppose, trying, trying to put me down, but uh, I didn't, didn't bite the way he wanted me to. For me, my goodness. Hello, <laughs> how are you doing? You alright? Oh, oh excellent, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> I've not seen the motorway quite so empty before. Really? <laughs> this is my toy, my, uh, my Thunderbird's garage. This is so That's impressive, impressive, isn't it? That's fantastic. <laughs> what a toy. Ah. Well, I wanted to sort of pose a car for my posing number plate, but. Uh, You've got a flash car for your flash number plate. <laughs> <laughs> What's the definition of posy and flash? Is there a difference? Well, po posy is uh, people you just sort of pose. <laughs> I'd like to get a, a picture of the two cars like this, if, if possible. Uh, that's fine, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right, camera's in the car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any time you're ready. I'll bring you there again. I guess I'd sort of envision them side by side rather than up and down, but... It is the best plate that somebody who wants people to know that their name is Nigel could have, obviously. <laughs> wow, well, I guess anyway, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it start up. Oh, there. <laughs> 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 the bucket seats fit my bottom perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> so you fancy, fancy a ride sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, no, you could have been, you could have been passenger. It seemed as a matter of ritual that Nigel won to take Nigel II out in the yellow Lambo. But soon the ultimate ride came to an end, and Nigel was sent on his way. Well, very nice to meet you, mate, and, yeah. uh, and I look forward to seeing you again. Yes. OK. Safe journey. Right, hey, hey. I'll just try this way anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> Happy it starts. Right, well, I'll be in touch. <laughs> Cheers. Bye then. See ya. Now we'd both met the top Nigel and set eyes on the perfect plate. Perhaps for Nigel 1, today was just another day. But I sensed for Nigel 2, this brief encounter meant much more. Yeah, it was, it was good to meet the famous N1GL because... Uh, all these years I've known of that plate. I'm not sure whether he would like my plate now or not, having spoken to him. Obviously, if I could afford N1GL, I would prefer to have N1GL to have a joke N2GL, uh, because N1 does actually spell the word properly. I wish him success one day and he can, uh, he can afford what he wants to afford. When I sort of acquired the number plate originally, I was... Uh, at a different stage of my life when I needed to surround myself with possessions to show not only myself but um, people whose opinions matter to me that I um, could achieve goals um, and I've, I believe I've moved on now and uh, I'm not too concerned about having a, a cherished number plate now anyway. It's not a very good value to have in life is it? It's, uh, it's very materialistic, I suppose, uh, which is, life isn't about. Maybe a day in the company of N1GEL had made Nigel II realise that owning the number one plate didn't automatically make you number one. Maybe he was also realising that he didn't have to be Nigel II anymore. He could just be Nigel. I was amazed when... I think he said, um, he's put it up for sale, because I never, ever thought he would part with the number plate. And the day he said to me, you know, I've put it on the internet, I'm selling it, and I said, you're growing up. <laughs> it's just I've moved on. That's all, I believe. <laughs> if I'm going to analyse myself, <laughs> doctor. <laughs> Two women enduring the rigorous training to fight for their country, soldier girls, tomorrow at half eight or more four. Next, though, wading through the political quagmire with Bremner, Bird and Fortune.